Our final contributor of the evening, who is Mike Unwin. Now, he's another uh, brat author. He is the author of the uh, Guide to Swaziland. He lived in Swaziland for, was it eight years, Mike? Five years. Um, we were actually there at the same time, but I didn't have the fortune, sadly, to bump into him then. But it's very nice to bump into him this evening. Uh, he's also the author of The Wildlife of Southern Africa. He uh, loves to tell people about the glories of wildlife tourism. Um, but uh, this evening, um, he is going to tell us a tale that is definitely wild, but in a slightly different way. Mike. Uh, thanks for coming everyone and thanks especially to Hillary and to Brat for uh, squeezing my little story into this um, we've all seen it now haven't we I don't have to advertise <laughs> fantastic They're all going to buy it gripping uh, <laughs> anthology I should call it more than a book um, yes my story uh, it's called something to declare I'm afraid it's not really a story of um, heroism and, and daring do it's more a tale of uh, foolishness and embarrassment, um, which in my years of travel is, is I've found to be uh, the more typical experience. Um, but I'll set the scene quickly. It took place in 1989 on a train um, from Zimbabwe. I was living and teaching in Bulawayo at the time, uh, from Zimbabwe to Gaborone in Botswana, across the border. Um, I was on a mission. I was with, uh, with two friends, and, and the mission was to, to get a car. Um, cars were very hard to come by in uh, Zimbabwe at that time, but Botswana, so we were told, had them. So, <coughs> it's past midnight. My fellow passengers are sprawled across the hard bench seats of the carriage. Some folded over luggage, others squash-faced against windows. The pulse of snoring ebbs and flows above the rhythmic clatter of the rails. Our train rumbles on into the night, eating up the dark miles of thorn scrub. I'm not asleep, though, and neither is Louise. Her eyes glint in the carriage's one weak overhead light. Do it now, she hisses. I get to my feet. Nobody appears to be watching. The aisle is an obstacle course. I maneuver over legs and baggage, steadying myself to avoid grabbing a sleeping face. A judder prompts one snorer to grunt and shift, stopping me dead. But the carriage dozes on. Reaching its end, I pass into an interim corridor, stepping over a film reel blur of tracks beneath the gap at my feet. I find myself standing between the closed doors of two toilets. Mine is the one to the left. I grasp the handle. But wait. Suppose they know what I've done. Suppose they're lying in ambush. One more step and the night will explode into lights, yells, whistles. They'll have me red-handed. No. It's just paranoia. There's no sign of life. Besides, can't a man answer a call?